Hey everybody, it's Mr. Woodward. In this video, we're gonna talk about something called gravitational fields. Let's jump right in. So first of all, over here, a gravitational field is a model used to explain the influences that a massive body, you can think of like a planet as a massive body, that a massive body extends into the space around itself, producing a force on another massive body. In Isaac Newton's concept, gravity was a force between point masses. We've studied that before. It's called Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. Later, Pierre-Simon Laplace attempted to model gravity as some kind of radiation field or fluid, okay? A radiation field or fluid. And since the 19th century, explanations for gravity have usually been taught in terms of a field model rather than a point attraction, okay? So in this lecture, we're transitioning from Newton's understanding of gravity as just an interaction, a force interaction between two masses to now a whole field, a force field. In a field model, I'm right here, in a field model, rather than two particles attracting each other, the particles distort space-time via their mass, and this distortion is what is perceived and measured as a force. Okay, so um, what might a gravitational field look like? So um, I've got a few uh, visualizations over here. Um, so in this first visualization, this object in the center is supposed to be the mass, um, and it's, it's actually just like that single point. And um, that mass is sort of distorting the space around it, creating a field of force. And you'll notice that all of the lines are pointing inwards towards that mass because gravity is an attractional force, right? It pulls things inward. And notice that as you go farther out, the lines get like pretty short. And so the big idea is that the field is strong, close to the mass, and weaker farther out. And in Newton's law of universal gravitation, that's described as an inverse square law, right? That as you move farther away from the mass, the, um, the strength of the force uh, weakens very dramatically. Okay, but what about um, over here? We've got like a couple of objects. You've got the Earth and the Moon that are interacting in the in this like shared field space. So around the Earth, we've got its gravitational field. Around the Moon, we have its gravitational field. And then there's some spots between them, like in here, where um, the gravitational field sort of has this funny shape, right? That's because those fields are overlapping and interacting in the space between them. Uh, that's a two-dimensional representation of that. This would be a three-dimensional representation of that, where you can kind of see here that the gravitational field actually moves into and out of the screen in this particular model. So it's 3D, it's surrounding the spaces, it's, it's in the space surrounding each of the objects. And then um, as you move to the fourth model, this is that space-time understanding. This is Einstein's understanding of gravity actually um, being modeled as like a fabric of space-time and that mass warps that fabric of space-time. So this is a very geometric view of how mass can sort of distort the, the fabric, right? And you can see that the lines are now moving in these weird ways. It's the same as if you were to drop a really heavy bowling ball in a trampoline, right? The trampoline would warp to accommodate that heavy bowling ball. All right, so... <clears throat> Um, four visualizations of the field, but we're gonna add to these visualizations some helpful equations to actually calculate the forces and the field itself. So here are three equations uh, to guide your thinking. Three equations to guide your thinking. So number one is, and we've looked at this before, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Okay, it determines the equal and opposite gravitational forces between masses. And um, we would just consider two masses, mass one and mass two. And uh, we have learned before about this constant, the universal gravi gravitational constant, which is a very small number because it suggests that the force of gravity between ordinary masses is actually extremely, extremely weak. Um, the second equation here uh, is, a, is a, a way of expressing a gravitational field, okay? So um, G is the letter that we use to represent a gravitational field. Okay, little g. And it is the um, force of gravity per unit of mass. So in other words, if you stuck one kilogram of mass in the field, um, how much force would it experience? 
okay? So again, the amount of force each kilogram of mass will experience while it's in the field, it's the force per unit of mass. So that would be expressed in units of newtons per kilogram, okay? And um, we know that on Earth, the gravitational field strength is exactly 9.81 newtons per kilogram, meaning on the surface of Earth, uh, 9.81 newtons per kilogram. And that is based on the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. And then if you substitute, so I'm here, if you substitute equation one into equation two, you can describe the field strength at any distance from the source of the field, okay? So if we're up here and we're in this model, and let's say we're like floating out in space like right here, we could actually figure out what the strength of the gravitational field is at that red dot, or super close to the Earth, or halfway between the two objects, right? Um, and this picture is trying to show the field strength uh, as evidenced by the length of the arrow. So this is like a long arrow, out here is like a very short arrow. So the field strength is here. So again, this is, this is the gravitational field. And it is uh, the universal gravi gravitational constant, G, times the mass at the, at the source. So the mass that's like in the center of that field that's warping the space-time around it. And then R is the distance from the source. I'll say distance from the, um, the mass uh, slash source. So that would be your distance from the Earth or your distance from the moon, whatever it is, the object that's, that's warping space-time around it. And notice that, again, we've got the inverse square law. So um, let's look at some examples where we actually use these to do some calculations.